Nathan, can you hear me? It's right here. That's how I got it. I use the exponent laws with the with the fraction, okay? All right. Let's talk about logarithms. Welcome. So uh Apparently we're gonna we're gonna do do uh, 28 questions in the next hour, but don't worry they're quick. Many of them are quick. We don't have to do every single one. But uh, anyway, um, we're talking about logarithms now. So what is a logarithm? So that's a very important question. A logarithm. Is an exponent that's it logarithm is an exponent so I'm gonna write down the answer to this first question and then you're gonna see that it's basically a communication question There's, there's uh, the answer. Um, this question is communication. There's no solving. You're not solving for anything. There's no X here. Do you see an X anywhere for these questions? This question is strictly about writing an exponential form into another form called logarithmic form. A logarithm is an exponent. So you see here the logarithm equals two. As we know, is means equals. So equals two. What's the exponent in the original question? It's two. So you see this logarithm, whatever that means, equals two. So all you're doing is you're taking the original expression here, equation here, four squared equals 16, and you're rewriting it a different way. This question, I wanna say it again, is communication. We're not applying anything. We're not solving for anything. So try to write down the next question here, this one here, 43, in logarithmic form. So how would you write it? It's hard to do it in the chat, but very good. I like how you wrote that, Jai. So you see how Jai put a bracket there with the two? Because he didn't really have a lot of options in the chat. This is how I would type it in the chat, just so you have uh, you can see what I'm saying. That's how I would prefer to write it, okay? What you wrote down, Jai, is fine. I understand what you're saying. So that's how I'm going to type it here. So I'm going to say here that log oops, on the chat in the question, log, and then the base is 2. So you put the base down there. You put the answer 8. And then that equals the exponent three. So we're just twisting, we're twisting the numbers around. What I'd like you to do now is take a moment. Actually, I want you to do questions 44, 45, and 46 the same way. I want you to rewrite it in logarithmic form. So take, take those numbers and twist them around and write them as a logarithm. So you got a minute. Do all three in one minute. No, no, I just haven't got to 47 yet, Anthony. I just, you can do 47 as well. I just wanted to do three at a time. I don't want to destroy anybody. <laughs>
So all you see here, you see that I'm taking the original exponential equation and I'm twisting it around and writing it a different way. 100% communication. If there's students here that maybe they're not that confident with math, what if you spoke extra languages? So let's say that you're, the, I'm not saying anybody here specifically, but let's say that, you know, you feel like, you know, I'm not that good at math. I don't think I'm that good. But I'm really good at languages. I know French, I know Italian or whatever, you know? Well, you actually have a good skill set with your languages because this here is like a language. You're just learning to write something a different way. You can think of this one here as being English and this one being French. You're just writing it in a different language. It's, it's all about grammar and structure. I'm not asking you to calculate anything. So uh, in the chat there, Anthony pointed out, is, is there a way, to, is the way you do 47 different? No, no, it's the same kind of thing. I just wanted to do a few at a time. So for 47 here, The uh, the base is 10. I'll take a look there for a second. Hang on. Is there a possibly a typo? Hang on. What what page are you talking about, uh, Jai? Page one. I don't have a log in there. I don't see anything on page one. I have page one right here. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. No, no. Uh, what I'm doing there, Jai, I'm not. I'm not writing them as inverses of. Uh, there. I understand what you're saying. I, I'm not using that notation there. I'm just. Uh, re, they're not. Those two there are not connected to each other. I'm not saying that. Uh, like it has to do with how you write an inverse um you could write it as x yeah yeah it's uh, yeah your your and your question is very deep I, I really respect your question but I'm, I'm doing something a lot more superficial there yeah good point i'm putting it in a way that if you graph them on the same grid they look like opposites of each other if you put what yeah oh cool, man awesome Okay, let's keep on rolling here. So 47, you got that. Now, some of you might not know this, but did you know that you go to your calculator, there's a button there and it says log and there's no number down here. You know that button on your calculator where it just says log like that? You see what I'm talking about? Your calculator has a button called log without the 10. It turns out that if the base is 10, that you don't have to write the 10 at all. We're going to do that next time though, okay? So for next time, we're going to learn that if you have a 10 there, you don't need to write the 10 at all. And for today's lesson, you should not pick up your calculator for the rest of today's lesson. Because today's lesson is strictly communication based. So let's go to question 48 here and rewrite it the other way. So when you're writing it, ask yourself, what is the base? So what is the base here? Can someone tell me what the base is? In the chat. Thank you, Irvin. And then a logarithm equals the exponent. So the number here should be one ninth. A couple more here. The base is two. The outcome is uh, one over twenty-eight. One over one twenty-eight. Sorry. And that equals negative seven. And finally, this one here. You're just writing it another way. The base is a half. That's weird. 
the outcome is 16, and that equals negative 4. So look at that. We just uh, went through about seven or eight questions or whatever it was. I wasn't counting. And uh, we were able to turn, which is the most important skill I want to take from you today. I mean, we're in our third hour, and I don't want to do anything too dangerous with you. Hopefully this wasn't too complicated. Now what I want you to do is go the other way. Let me give you the logarithm, and I want you to write it back in the exponential form. So now we're going to translate. We're going to write it in a different language. We're going to write it as an exponential. So let's take a look here for the first one, and then you can take some time to try a few more on your own. In this case, the base is 10. The exponent is 3, because remember, a logarithm equals 3. And you get 10 to the 3 equals 1,000. So you see how I twisted the numbers around? That's what's important here, is that you understand how to twist the numbers around from exponential to logarithmic form. If you understand that process, you are golden. Because that's what I need you to understand today. That's it. That's all I want you to understand. Going back and forth. That's it. So, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, Shaquille. I will put questions on your quiz, and I promise you that it's going to be easy ones. Uh, that would be what? Can someone tell me the uh, the outcome for 52? What would you write here? In the chat? Perfect. Thank you, Anthony. All right. Has anybody not seen this before? Who has not seen this kind of stuff before in their life? So what do you think? Okay, Shaquille, what do you think? Jordan, Cole, what do you guys think about this? Siddharth, do you think this logarithm thing is hard, what I'm doing right now? Is it is it difficult? Of course it's easy. I'm glad you're saying that. It's not too hard. Therefore, it won't be on the test. <laughs> you guys are funny. You guys are funny. No, no. I don't have that philosophy. I I don't. You took my advice for the midterm. I, I'm I'm confident that for when you wrote the midterm, I told you two thirds of that midterm was easy peasy. Just go through it, you know, first control, and it was. I swear you needed advanced functions for this program where we did logs. Huh. Yeah. So the problem is, is that the problem is, is that uh. Specifically to Siddharth's comment, uh, there's a lot of little things in math that you need to know in this program. But for me to, to show you those things and to tell you why you need them and to apply them is very difficult because I'm kind of like the uh, I'm kind of like the person that gets dumped everything, you know. So all the professors will come to me and say, John, we need this, we need that, we need this, we need that. And I'm like, I got this much time and I got to teach that much stuff. So, unfortunately, Siddharth, I can't really give you application for every single thing to, to motivate you why you need all these things. But, for example, the finance question, the one we just did before the break, that's a motivation for why you need to know exponentials. Also, when I show you next week how to use logarithms to solve for time, you'll understand why logarithms are useful. So, let's take a look at question 59. 59 is a very, very important question. So it's your first actual equation involving logarithms. So how the heck are you going to solve this? Look at this. How the heck are you going to solve that? Well, you see how it's all like, like how do you get rid of log or whatever, right? It turns out that when you have a question involving an exponential or a logarithm, you always can write it two different ways. So you can think of it two different ways and then decide which way is better for you to answer the question. So if you look at this question here, we have two options. We could pursue the question the way it is. Let me just copy and paste it right there. Or we could pursue the question the other way, which is to write it as an exponential. What I need you to fully, fully get in your mind is that when you have a question with logarithms or exponentials, there's always option A and option B. And you can decide which option is better for you. 
So you tell me, is option A on the left right better or the one on the right? Who's better, the left one or the right one? Of course the right one, because it's something that you're familiar with, and that's exactly what I would do too. 512 equals x plus 1. And then whatever Anthony said there is correct, x equals 511. Beautiful. So this game of going with exponential or logarithmic form, like option A or option B, door number one, door number two, whatever you want to say, that's what you're going to do. You're going to do this next week a lot with me. I'm going to give you an equation, and you're going to have to decide, should I leave it as an exponential or write it as a logarithm? And then maybe I can figure out an answer better one way or the other. So that this question is really important, that you understand that there is always two doors that you could use or choose. Question 60 and 61 are graphing. So for the sake of time, because we do have to cover some other stuff right now, I, I mentioned to you also that I'm not testing you on graphing. It's not, a, it's not an issue of time. It's, sorry about that. It's an issue that I don't want you to get into graphing in this course. Uh, the graphing stuff I really is more of like a, an exploration on your own that I'd like you to, that you, uh, like you to perform. But I'll put the answers here anyway. The takeaway here, and it goes back to what Siddharth said about the inverse uh, at the beginning, like with uh, the, the base B thing. Um, I'm just trying to have them on the same grid here. So the red graph is the exponential, which is 2 to the x. And then the green graph is the logarithm, which is the inverse. We're not talking about inverses specifically too much in this course. But the green graph represents the graph of a logarithm. And you'll notice that it has different behavior. Like, for example, the domain of the green graph, x has to be positive. And because x is positive, that means that you cannot take a logarithm of 0 or negative numbers. That's an important thing that we'll discover next class. So what we're going to do now is a little bit of algebra for the last part of today's class. I have Eight questions, sorry, uh, my bad. I have eight questions, but the first five are algebraic in nature, and the second five, and the, and the last three are more of a solve type situation. So we're going to review something now, which is new, called rules for logarithms. So I'm going to take you back here for properties, and we're going to practice using these rules here. So I'm going to just take these rules and import them into our, our next example. So three rules that you need to get familiar with, with logarithms. The first one says that if you have if you have a logarithm plus a logarithm, and the bases are the same, you see how they both have base B, that you could merge them into one logarithm as such. So we can do that here. See, we have log base 2 of 5 and log base 2 of X. You notice how they both have base 2? That's very good. Because they have the same base, then it enables us to merge them into one logarithm. So what goes in the box there? Can someone tell me what goes in the box? According to the rules. Thank you, Jai. The answer is definitely the 5x goes in the box. So that's how you do, that's how you apply the rules of logarithms. You can, you can take expressions and you can merge them together. So let's take a look at 63 here and figure out which rule applies. Which of the three rules there applies here? The first one, the second one, or the third one? Second. Okay, so 
So what do we do with those numbers? What do we do with 25 and 5x? Thank you. Thank you, Jai. Hopefully someone else is in there too to help out with this conversation. This simplifies a little bit. So we're just playing around with these rules. And uh, and there are other rules, but these are the ones that are most... Uh, whoops, what the heck happened there? Anyway, uh, 64 is a different situation. We're just going to... Uh, you can use your calculator for this one, if you like. So I said no calculator, because this question can be solved without a calculator. And I'll show you how. I'll show you how you do this without a calculator. So you see the third rule here? This rule here applies right here. Because I can take the exponent n, or in this case, 0.2, and I can bring it to the front. So then the, the question that you might be uh, concerned about here is what is log base 5 of 5? Well, let me rephrase the question a different way. Log base 5 of 5 is question mark. So I'm trying to figure out what to do with this guy right here. I'm trying to figure out this right here. Let's put that in uh, green. So what I'm going to do is I look up here and I say that. But then what if I wrote that as an exponential? What would that look like as an exponential? You know how to do that from earlier. You write, yeah, Thank you. Thank you, Jai. It's 5 to the what equals 5. So what does that question mark equal? Can anybody tell the class what the question mark should be? Other than John, no offense. What should that question mark be? Jai, you're banned from this one question. Sorry, no offense. Uh, okay, that's the answer. Yeah, I think I think Matthew's a step ahead. Anthony, uh, the question mark has to be one. So then over here, this would be 0.2 times 1, which is what the answer Matthew posed, posed is. Matthew posted, sorry. So I was just having a little bit of uh, I turned it up a little bit there on the difficulty. This type of question, if it kind of scared you, don't worry, because we're going to do lots of these next week. This question is more for next week, but I thought I'd throw it in here because it, it's a nice little question. It definitely would be a brain a brain teaser for, for uh, someone that's just seeing this for the first time. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to actually skip 65 and 66. I don't like these questions, and I would never ask them on a test, okay? So I'm just going to say that here. Don't worry about these questions, and I will never ask you these on a test. But we will do 7, 68, and 69, which is the last ones we're going to cover today. So I'm not I'm not dodging them because they're not helpful. It's just that um, we don't really need them right now. So here's kind of the last uh, three questions that we're going to play with today. And let's see how we do with them. So uh, the question here is to solve for y in terms of x. Sorry about that. So how do we do that? Any thoughts on how we can do that? It's a weird question, isn't it? Let me show you one of them, and then maybe it helps you do the other ones. 
So what I can do here is I notice that there's a minus sign. So what I can use is the second rule. You see rule number two here? Because they have the same base, they both have base C. I could write it as um, 6 divided by X, like that. Does that make sense? So I'm just merging them together using the rule number two. Ah, good point, Jai. Uh, you are allowed to cross them out. I don't want to say cancel, but yeah, you can think of it as canceling it. Yeah, it's actually you're taking an inverse, but that's okay. You can just say cross them out because of uh, sim symmetry. That's the answer to that question. Question 67, 68, and 69. For those of you that end up, end, end up in any type of uh, research or experimental uh, type uh, future, so let's say that you end up someone being in labs or something, and, or you know, as a manager, you do things, but career changes, and you end up doing something more experimental-based, or you do some more research-based stuff, then... Uh, these types of things come out when you try to model real life data. You end up creating formulas that look like this. So for those that do any labs, these are very, very common in lab laboratory results, analysis of laboratory results. Okay, question 68. Let's see if we can, we can try to merge these and do what basically Jai was saying is kind of cross them out at the end. So, So I noticed something's interesting here. We got a little bit of a problem because in this formula, this this looks like rule number one, doesn't it? It has the plus. You see this formula here? Is there a negative two there? Do you see a negative two in this formula right here? Obviously, I'm being facetious. There's no negative two here, right? So what the heck? What do you do with the negative two? I don't want this negative two here. I don't want it. I'm just going to ignore it for a second. I'm going to ignore it for a second. Because if it wasn't there, then I could use rule number two and say that it's seven bracket x plus one. Because that's rule number, I'm sorry, rule number one. I can't do that. I can't do that because there's a. So what I. Prior to doing that step, is use rule number three. I can bring it upstairs. Like that. So do you see what I did there? I brought the two upstairs because now I can merge them together. So this is going to become a negative two. So that's what I did there. I used rule number three to get that negative two up top. And then as you, you could say, you just cross those out because they look the same as far as you're concerned right now. You get y equals seven. I'm not satisfied with this answer. What don't I like about this? What's what's bad about this answer? Any thoughts? What do I not appreciate about this uh, formula? Yeah, the negative. Thank you, Shivam. Thank you, Shaquille. So yes, get that rid of that negative. Let's do this. That's, that's the formula. So you learn about little tricks, but also you're really just manipulating the formula here over and over again. Uh, which top piece, Shaquille? Do you mean, are you talking about 68? Or, okay, so this part right here. 
Okay, so what it was, good that you asked that because I copied it down here. What I did was I noticed that there's a negative 2 here. But I can't use this formula because there's no negative 2 here in the front. So what I did was I used the third rule. I used this rule to bring the negative 2 right here. I brought it from there and I brought it up top. And then I'm very happy because now I have something that looks like rule number one. So now I do rule number one to get to here. Is that better? Yeah, good, man. You got to get that negative two out of the way and then you can move it up. So I've revealed to you all of my tricks, all of my sorcery. So I have nothing else to spoil. Nothing else to give you except one more question, which is uh, much of what you just saw. So what I'd like to do is merge the two quantities on the left, but I can't merge them because there's a power there. So the four in the front. So I bring the four up top. Same thing with the second term. Don't like the three there. I'll bring it here bring it with the Y using rule number three. So let's say that here. And you can also rearrange it so Y is alone. Yes, you can do that, Anthony, for sure. Use property three to bring exponents up. There's lots of ways of answering these questions. So this is nothing but just one approach, but I actually prefer what Anthony says as well. I just prefer to, I'm just doing it this way because I don't want to start moving things around and then people might ask, why are you moving it around? You don't actually have to move anything around. Okay, let's cross out those logarithms. You get X to the four over Y cubed. 27 and now now the question is algebraic still but no logarithms so i'll just do a little uh little exchange there i'll say x to the 4 over 27 equals y cubed but i did a, i did a little swap there or equivalently you can say that y cubed is X to the 4 over 27. Just a second, people. I got to check something. And uh, and at, that, at this point, you can get Y. I'm going to work sideways because I'm running out of room. That answer looks good, but we could go a step further if you like. You could write this as uh, two separate cube roots. Because the cube root of 27 is a nice number.
Wow. This is kind of our first marathon lesson. Obviously, with no quiz this week, that means we have an opportunity to do more uh, material. And it's important, though, like when I planned out this semester, I deliberately didn't put a quiz this week because I knew that logarithms need a little bit extra attention. But I also had to balance the fact out that probably about a third of you, if not half of you, have seen this already. So uh, anyway, there's my review and also in a review of exponents and introduction to logarithms. So I will I will polish up this uh, this video, this recording and uh, put it on YouTube as soon as possible. Sounds good. I'll try to put it up today if possible, but I need to uh, get ready for my I need to. I'd like to do another lesson and maybe if I do something in the other lesson that I could add, I'll put it there. I also might put this as two separate videos on YouTube. One video would be just the exponential stuff, and then one video would just be the logarithm stuff. And then next week's class would be the third video. So it's kind of like it'll have three videos. All right. Anyway, I think we've had enough today. I think I think you guys can uh, you guys can uh, take a break. Plus, you got class at one. Is that right? Is it one o'clock? Materials. Yeah. So you know what? Go, go get some lunch. Go enjoy yourself. Yeah. yeah, go go take a break. Go enjoy yourself, guys. No no quiz this week. We'll finish class now. I'll stay here for questions if you have any questions. But uh, yeah, thanks so much. Have a lovely day.